It's become an annual tradition, one of the worst ones. Every spring, schools hold graduation. Plenty of Democrats, but almost no Republicans are invited to speak, and the Republicans who do show up are booed. Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos learned that recently when she was booed at Bethune-Cookman University's commencement. Jason Nichols is professor of African American Studies at the University of Maryland at College Park. He's denounced Secretary DeVos as a representative of white power in the United States. We spoke with Professor Nichols recently. Here's the conversation. Professor Nichols, thanks for joining us tonight. Why were you upset that Betsy DeVos spoke before these students? So I wasn't upset at all, Tucker, uh, that she spoke before these students. I'm a firm believer in the First Amendment. Uh, I think she has a right to speak. My problem was that the community made a decision that she should not come, including 60,000 people from the BCU network, said that they didn't want her there. And I think commencement is a special event, uh, particularly for students and families. And if they decide that they don't want her there, it shouldn't be a unilateral decision made by the president of the university. Well, 60,000 people don't go to the school, so I don't know exactly who those people were. That's far more than actually attend the university. So, you know, I, I don't know where you're, where you're getting that number or why you yeah. believe that that online survey speaks for the community, whatever the community is. Did you poll every student there? So, no, I, I did not poll other, every student. I looked at, well, I think in terms of the student body, we saw how they reacted. They used their First Amendment right, which was to, to protest. I think, you know, when we get to 60,000, I talked about the community that's not only students, that's alumni, that's faculty past and present, that's staff past and present, that's everybody who, who really cares about BCU and feels invested in what goes on there, particularly right. in commencement. Well, of course, you, you don't know that any of that's true because it's an online survey, so it could be anybody. So let's not pretend that we know exactly who these people are. Here's, look, you may not like Betsy DeVos or think she shouldn't have spoken, or maybe the kids don't like her. I'll take your word for it. Here's what draw, drew my attention to you. You wrote in a piece for The Hill that having her there um, ignores the desires of black people, you said, especially students. They don't matter in the face of green dollars and white power. What does Betsy yes. DeVos have to do with white power? So she is a, a member of the, the Trump administration, which has shown racial animus towards uh, people of color all over. And also, when we talk about white power, I just want to be clear that white power are, is not really shaved heads and camp, combat boots the way we think of white power. White power are social and political norms that generate disparities in, in health outcomes and education and employment and wealth and criminal justice. So when we talk about white power, we're talking about a system and something that is systemic. And when we're talking about Betsy you don't DeVos, know you're not saying anything. To I mean, you're just another tenured demagogue who doesn't know anything about what he's talking <laughs> about. I mean, look, Betsy DeVos is a living human being. Yeah. Do you have evidence that she supports absolutely. white power, whatever that is? Let, let's not tar her by association. Uh, absolutely. Well, first Does I every black to, employee well, of the administration talker, support white talker. power? Like, what are you talking about? I'm sick of this. I mean, okay, let's so be real. Uh, allow, me, <laughs> allow me to tell you what it is that I'm talking about. Good. Now, in terms of, of Betsy DeVos, and her connection and why these students would be upset. Number one, she wants to cut $4 billion from Pell Grants. Now, 900 students at BCU actually receive Pell Grants, and we know African-American students at large are more likely to receive them because they're more likely to be poor, actually three times as likely as white students. She also wants to, uh, you know, end uh, student loan forgiveness for people who are in service. These are all things that are going to affect African American students. But if we're talking about the Trump administration, well, they'll also at, affect at large, students of every color. Wait, hold on. They'll also affect students of every color. We're I mean, they're about not. Wait, hold on. Slow, slow down. Now, no, look, we're, we're talking about disproportion. About, we're talking. Hold on. Slow down. We're absolutely. talking about policies. Okay. We don't have to talk about that. The policies that are federal law and therefore affect everyone, sure. regardless of what he looks like. So they're not inherently racial. Okay. Oh, First. No, but second, that's, that's second, where you're wrong. Well, no, they're not. I mean, there's nothing about race in Pell Grants, and there's nothing about race in debt forgiveness. And so if you're using that line of logic, you're saying that if I'm opposed to you on policy issues, I'm a racist, or I support white power, and you shut the conversation down. That's not down, what I'm saying. Tucker, what are you Tucker, saying? you're obfuscating what it is that I'm saying. Well, what are you saying? What I'm, what I'm saying, I've already said what, what white power is, and, and I believe that but what we're that talking that about things that disproportionately, that things that disproportionately affect people of color. 
And, you know, if you want to talk about the Trump administration at large... But, but hold on, why does that mean talk... that she's... With... Stop, look, I'm trying to be patient. If you want to have a debate about Pell Grants, it's Absolutely. totally legitimate. I mean, we may even agree okay. on Pell Grants. I don't even know, or school choice. Sure. It's when you start calling people bigots that you end the conversation. And as a professor, I, I, I think never, you would like Tucker, to illuminate Tucker, it, elucidate, where, 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 rather where? than cast dispersions and shut down, which is what you're doing. Okay, Tucker, I, I'm wondering where it is that I called Betsy DeVos individually a bigot. Please, please tell me where that is. You because said I, I don't remember, that I don't she remember spoke saying that she because, was a bigot. Because of white power. And my point is, look, you may not like I, the Trump people, you may disagree with her view on Pell Grants, but that is not I you never called her a white, bigot. That's exactly what you're, let's not be coy here. You wouldn't use that phrase. I would never use that phrase unless I was calling someone a bigot, because that's what it is. No, I, I, don't, I don't think that that's what it is. I think it's saying that the school, and as a matter of fact, it wasn't even a uh, critique on Ms. DeVos herself. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in the First Amendment to the Constitution. I think she had every right to speak. Um, I think she could have done what Dr. Carson but did when he was... Could, nobody's okay, contesting her right to speak. You're not contesting her right to speak, and I'm not either. Absolutely You're just not. saying she shouldn't okay, good, have done it. We agree. Because she's on the wrong side of Pell Grants, and white supremacy or white power got her there. And I'm just saying, look, you totally eliminate the possibility of reasonable conversation when you say nonsense like this that you can't even define, you clearly don't understand, and you're just telling other people oh, to shut I up. I don't understand. I think I clearly, do, I clearly defined it for you. Uh, I'm not sure if you were listening, uh, Tucker. Intensely. But I, I think I defined it for you. Okay. Well, I, I don't understand. So I hope you will come back uh, and fill me in. I appreciate your coming on tonight, Absolutely. Professor. Thank you.